Hello and welcome to another part of the European Agenda program. Today our main topic is the uh, Kurdish leader Mr. Abdullah Öcalan's uh, situation under the Turkey's isolation. Uh, we have uh, today uh, Kurdish Solidarity Collective co-coordinator uh, Fazela Mohammed. Uh, dear Fazela, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here and to actually speak on, on our latest uh, initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's start with the uh, initiative that uh, has been released newly and he has 71 signatures, which is amazing. Kurdish Solidarity Collective has announced the press release with 71 politicians, academics and artists from the several countries that are calling for an, an end of the Turkey's attacks on Kurdish settlement. Uh, how would you comment on Turkey's latest war crime? and uh, could you please give us some more information and highlight the important part of that statement also which important names you have uh, in this list thank you very much and as you know uh, turkey's ongoing assault on kurdish people has been going on for some time we know that uh, the attacks have in the past uh, you know, in Syria, focused um, have it had resulted in the death of many women and children. There has been, an, uh, you know, a complete violation of international law where the bombings are quite indiscriminate, and Turkey has shown no regard for the human rights of of ordinary Kurdish people. And the current situation and the current war declared again on the Kurds, Kurdish people in Syria, has has. Is, is just an escalation of the ongoing violence. Uh, the latest initiative is meant to look at a way in which we can enforce international law and, well, enforcement of international law by all the major role players in the world. We think that it's critical that the both the kind of intellectual, you know, cultural leadership from around the world support the initiative of, uh, you know, ending war and bringing about peace in the Middle East. Of course, this process is at the moment primarily about the Kurdish people, but we feel that in our initiative, we can make a lasting contribution, a contribution towards lasting peace, uh, you know, in the Middle East. So we think the, um, the, an initiative for peace is really critical. As you know, in South Africa, we too seem to have an intractable position where the racist apartheid regime tried to <clears throat> oppress black South Africans. And, and what we did is we stood up against that. We made the call internationally and through the solidarity of ordinary people from around the world, we managed to shift that in the same way. And then we looked at the process of peace. So what we're doing in this initiative is calling upon all people to support an initiative for a just peace in, in you know, for the Kurdish question and also to look at ways in bringing about lasting peace in the Middle East. Of course, in from the South African perspective, we have the head of the KUSATU, um, you know, which is the largest trade union in South Africa, which has millions of supporters, but have like a signed mem membership of over six, seven hundred thousand. So those people, the president of COSATU has signed up. We have, um, you know, many other Nobel laureates and people from all over the world who are supporting a, a process of peace. What is clear from the Ukraine situation is war is untenable. And we need to find a way that opportunistic role players like Erdogan, President Erdogan, I suppose you could call him, from Turkey, who are using the suffering and problems of war to actually enhance his own personal popularity in Turkey. And we are saying no longer can autocratic leaders use the deaths of of Kurdish people to popularize themselves. So we are calling for an end to the current initiative by, you know, the current bombing, uh, end, end of the bombing of the people in, uh, Kurdish people in Syria. 
and a and an initiative for peace. Thank you. Let's talk about a little bit about the, the Turkey's war crimes to underline it as well. Uh, Turkey, uh, since last year, September, they started uh, using chemical weapons, which is uh, uh, definitely against the international law as well, and it's a war crime as well. So, uh, And these uh, allegations are still on about the chemical weapons. How would you going to evaluate the usage of the chemical weapons very short, very briefly, please. Okay, of course, I mean, there is a reason why in international law, the chemical, the usage of chemicals, uh, chemical bombing is prohibited. It's because it, and it, it is a war crime. And what we are saying is that we need to find a way to prevent this kind of Im impunity, you know, where there are no consequences for countries breaching international law. So one of the, the, the points of this initiative is actually to look at how there are consequences for the breach of international law and to create a voice for those who, who are impacted by these, um, you know, human rights abuse. Actually, it's a abuse of a very high level. I mean, chemical bombing on populations or anybody is prohibited in terms of law. And so our initiative will look at ways in in, in building some kind of accountability for the for the Turkish regime. Thank you, dear Fazela. Uh, another significant issue is about uh, Kurdish leader Mr. Abdullah Öcalan as well. Um, so uh, you have been you have been campaigning for uh, Mandela as well, and Karak is also one of the closed uh, institution to you as well. So I would like to ask you uh, if you can uh, evaluate this shortly as well. What is the similarities between uh, Mandela and Öcalan? Uh, very shortly, if you can uh, underline that as well. Okay, uh, I think that Abdullah Öcalan, like um, uh, Nelson Mandela are people who fought for the freedom of their people. And what they did was face regimes which have no regard for human rights. And actually, you can't appeal to the conscience of, 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 an, of leadership who have no conscience. So those people have embarked on a struggle in every form to actually attain the human rights for their people. So that is the similarity between Mandela and Ocalan. Of course, uh, Mandela had more access to people. He had access to his lawyers in his entire incarceration. Abdullah Ocalan is prevented. I mean, he's kept isolated, which is also a breach of law. I mean, it's a torture to keep a prisoner for long periods isolated. So we must understand that actually the conditions under which Ocalan is kept, as bad as Mandela's conditions were. At least he was allowed access to other people. There was a community of other political prisoners uh, who he could interact with. And I think that what happens in such cases is that it really makes the incarceration even worse. But I think that people like Ocalan and Mandela are visionaries of peace because whilst they, they, you know, they conducted the struggle in all its forms, ultimately the role of a freedom fighter is to bring people to the negotiating table and to make a call for peace. And Ocalan has over and over, you know, called for a peaceful resolution of the conflict and said that actually we need to do that. In the face of, of, um, of repression and in the face of, of torture, he still has the capacity to do that. And I think it's a mark of great leadership actually. And we call for the immediate release of Abdullah Ocalan and all political Kurdish political prisoners in Turkey. Dear Fazela, is there anything else that you would like to add on for our main topic, and as well as the statement that you have released uh, of the of the Kurdish Solidarity Collective is also a new initiative with a seventy one. Uh, very well-known signatory. So is there anything else that you would like to add on about this that I didn't ask maybe? So we want to ask all people, this is a train. We started the one, the engine of the train for peace in the Middle East. And we sing, and for the, for the resolution of the Kurdish issue. So we are asking people to join this train. 
and come into the compartments and push it forward. Because it is only when ordinary people make a noise to their governments, if people organize against this uh, oppression, that we will see progress. Because we can see from the previous question also, there is really unwillingness at many political levels to deal concretely with the issue. It is more than making statements. It's about taking action against the, the Turkish state. So we're asking people to join this train. Come and add your name to our initiative. Come and um, join in the activities, the organization. Mobilize people in your community who you think should sign the declaration so that more and more people show their commitment to peace and actually reject this violent response and, and, and criminal activity by the Turkish regime. Dear Fazela Mohammed, uh, Kurdish Solidarity Collective Co-Coordinator, thanks for joining us. Thank you for your valuable comments today. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your calling me. Thank you very much again to all the listeners as well.